So where are we today? We're at Fort Stevens State Park. That's a 155 millimeter. It's a big gun. World War II. So apparently this uh, area is the only place during World War II. Oh, and sorry, World War I. Well, I was talking about World War II, where the United States was hit and the Continental 48. The Japanese submarine fired on, on this fort. Yeah, I think so. And destroyed the baseball backstop. That's right. I'm glad they did no more damage. Yes. But anyways, uh, so we're here, homeschooling field trip. So this 155 millimeter gun will shoot nine over nine miles, a 95 pound projectile. That's incredible, huh? That would hurt. That, can you imagine what it would be like to stand here when that thing's going off? Mm -hmm. My goodness. I'd be plugging my ears. You bet you would. That's a big cannon. Uh, I think this is better for plumbing, ABS, perhaps? It's plastic. It's plastic. Yeah, because if it weren't plastic, I don't think that that base would be substantial to hold that up if it was <laughs> cast iron, huh? Nope. <laughs> Finally, a woman's made it to combat. So we've got General Heart Racer. Or GG. General Ginger. So you came up with a pretty clever name for her today. What was it this morning you said? It was the Reign of Terrier? Yeah. The Reign of Terrier. <laughs> I love having a word nerd. All right, Jack, so this is... That is so funny. This is part of your field trip here. What what does not belong here? Um, a bowling ball. A bowling ball. They all are. I don't think that that's accurately correct. Period correct, is it? That is funny. They just paint them. Uh, we are about to enter Battery Pratt. It remained active until 1945. And it says to be, enter, you watch your children enter at your own risk. Hey, hey, hey. Don't That's worry. not okay. Don't worry, dogs won't eat you. That's not okay. Let's go up. All right, so this is uh, Battery Pratt. It's open. Well, let's go up there and look at the, the gun. So this battery is built into the side, kind of the built into the side of a hill here, isn't it? What do you see up there? Oh, the ground's there. I see the water. So you could you could basically be behind this wall and shoot out at anything that was trying to come up to Columbia and be in pretty safe, pretty safe uh, location, couldn't you? Yeah. I suppose this is all for them. Maybe they needed to get a drink when they were hot and thirsty. <laughs> so what, what's this for, baby? Well, that's called a gantry crane, and I'm assuming that's what they use for lifting the... Um, bowling balls. The bowling balls. <laughs> lifting the bowling balls and putting them in, in the breach here. Look at that. That's a big, big shell. This one is not ABS. Yeah, that's a real one there, I'll bet. Wow. Quite a thing, isn't it? Yeah. So you could see that they could, looks like they could lower the barrel down to keep it safe underneath the concrete. Mm -hmm. And then they would, of course, raise it up when they were gonna shoot. And then it could turn here? Yeah, and you could take it to sea right there. Look at that. So there's, that's the, those are the rails for the gantry crane right there on both sides. So those wheels would have rolled in there. Interesting. So, what, I suppose that was a drinking fountain? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. That's where they kept the telephone, huh? Telephone box. So what's this here? <laughs> Pizza oven. Pizza oven. I'll bet that's where they, they probably brought the powder out. But that was the magazine. So here, oh, this is here, Jack, would be the foundation where that that gun would have sat in. That's the electrical cable. It's that electric pump on it. It ran an electric motor that ran a hydraulic pump, perhaps. They had electricity back then. So we're underneath the battery. Look up on the ceiling. You see those? Uh, see those rails? Yeah. They would have used that for hauling. They probably kept their uh, the powder in the magazine or the cartridges or what, what do you call it? Projectiles? Come on in. Papa's always prepared with a shirt. Just need everything. 
Wow. So what do you suppose these hooks are for? Help. Huh. You have one too, of course. Let's see. It's me. Do you really have one? Of course I do. What kind of question is that? You have a pocket knife as well? As well? Whoa! Then now. Hold the wall. Oh, you do? What do you have there? Pocket knife and flashlight. Good girl. I'm proud of you. So this is the magazine room, and this looks like some sort of a carriage that would have held the charges, the projectiles, and then they, they that's like an elevator, isn't it? Yeah, so this is a hoist of some sort. A hoist? Delivery hand-powered ammunition hoist. What's up there? I'm gonna go up and see it's in the Oh yeah, that's what, that's where here's, it came. Here's a picture of it. It comes out upstairs. So it went here, and then it would have gone up, and then... Cool. Here, this is interesting. In actual practice, it was easier to simply carry the powder out of the battery and up the stairs to the loading platform as using the hoist was awkward for such light ammunition. <laughs> so this is like the grandfather of the $5,000 toilet seat? That's right. <laughs> Here's the shell room. Oh, I think in here. You're wrong, there's a bombshell in here. That's you. <laughs> no, this is interesting as well. In the magazine room. Oh. So what are, what are these? These are the truck. Well, that's the propellant. Powder for battery crap was kept in single silk bags stored in metal canisters. This silk bags so they wouldn't spark. I guess so. It was designed to hold 500 canisters of powder at a maximum capacity. At your far left, the round hole in the wall is the passing window originally designed to allow the powder bag to be passed into the shell room so the powder room could be kept closed for safety. So that would have been the observation tower. That's where they would arrange the guns, Jack. Mm. They would have been there with their binoculars. It would have probably been shooting at the sea. Yeah, there's a lot of sea out there to shoot at. This is battery 245. During World War II, a group of batteries was constructed along the west coast to supplement the harbor defenses. Let's go see the guns. Heart racer! Oh man! I'm happy to see you too. Everybody love her. I sure would like to get inside there, but they've welded the door shut. Guess I'm not the only one that's ever thought of that. Oh, you're brave, huh? Are you afraid of heights? This isn't bad. This is about the height of our treehouse. What is it, Mama? Do you think this used to be all sand? West Battery Command Station. And Mine Observation Station, 1899 to 1911. Um, the East Bunker was used to sight enemy ships in the Columbia River and their proximity to sea mines, which were detonated from shore as the ship passed. Sea mines? Hey, what are you doing in there? So, what do you suppose that concrete's probably it's old. seven it's feet thick at the base? This is cool in here. Yeah, you, you see a lot if you're five foot seven. Well, think of the average height back in this is, 1908. This is what I would look at. The, obviously, the commander was short. Well, it says from 1899. So the, you, you're quite the anomaly. 
Because think of my height. George Washington was six feet tall. Yeah, Abraham but he, Lincoln was six four. They towered over everyone. Being a sniper is going. I'm just imagining being the person not being sniped at. And hearing a little shot goes ding. She won't let go. I think she's a marsupial. Ow, ow, she sure has claws. Ow. Heart racer. A lot of people have recommended that you have your own channel. Only problem is that we need to get someone to run it. Jack, can you run a heart racer channel? No. All right. Thank you. So when is a ship a ship and a boat a boat? Uh, isn't it that a boat can fit on a ship? I was told that. I don't, may, I don't know if that's true. I, I was told that a boat can be brought aboard a ship, but a ship cannot be brought aboard a boat. So is it all a matter of... Or another ship. This is from 1900, this battery. It was different from the Lewis and Walker batteries in that it had circular gun pits with 360 degree fields of fire. The two guns remained in the battery as a curiosity during the years of lack security between the wars. At the beginning of World War II, the pits were covered over, and it wasn't until the end of the war that the guns were removed. At the same time, interior tunnels were transformed into the harbor entrance control post for all military forces at the mouth of the Columbia River. Battery Mischler is the only facility of its kind open to the public in the United States. Guided, narrated tours of the battery are available to the public during the summer. Power was produced from the plant in to operate the open. West Battery. I think the door's open, Jen. <laughs> Can you read about it? Um, electric power was produced from this plant to operate the West Battery in 1920. It was converted into a reserve power plant to supplement the central power plant. Wow, that's a big engine. How many cylinders does it have, Jack? Can you tell by looking at it? Four? How can you tell that? I don't know. I'm just guessing. Well, that, that, that's correct, but I want to know how you came up with that. I'm looking at the... I, I see these little um, kind of spring things. The valves and the spark plugs? No, I see that spring. You know, that one's just the red thing? That's right. And that's what I thought. Yeah, oh, that's... valve springs there. Yeah. Okay.